Working with errors in Rust can actually be really like not as easy as it might feel like it should be, considering everything else that Rust gives us, especially looking at other languages and how robust their error handling systems are. There is no try catch in, in Rust, so I can't write I can't write code. Um, I can't throw code. So let, let's create a function here. Function this always fails. Um, so because there's no try catch, there's no throw, uh, if there is a possibility of something failing, it has to return something called a result. And a result, a result is very similar to an option in the fact that it can be one of two things. It can be an error, in which case the error is included, or it can be okay, meaning that whatever was supposed to be passed through is okay. Now, normally you can um, just create like any good old result with like result here. This is the standard library's result. And then you say, okay, well, if this is successful, I I want it to return nothing like that. Um, but if it's a failure, I want you to return something. Well, um, let's just have it be like a static string. So if I do okay, static stir, then here we're just going to have it return an error and then just put in a static string here. So uh, I am failure. And this works. Like if I try to now run this code, uh, we can then say this always fails and it returns a result. So I have to handle this. Um, so I can unwrap this. And if I run this, we should get right here, result unwrap on a value I am failing. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, but what if I want to be able to use the question mark operator? So to use question mark operator, then whatever function we're in here has to return the same thing. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because in a real program, we might have another, pro, you know, another function. This also fails and it returns uh, a, his own result and perhaps its return type isn't a static string. Perhaps it its return type is for some reason a, a U32. Uh, any type can be thrown in here. Uh, the compiler doesn't really care about that. And so here we're gonna type error and like, I don't know, 42. Well, suddenly we have a problem here because, well, okay, I can only return this if it returns a result tri type. Okay, so. We have to return a result type from here, which is perfectly legal to do in tests. Uh, okay, we don't care about the, like if it's okay, but if it's an error, well, what do I deal with? Um, I don't know what to put in here. If I put the static stir, then it's, well, okay, it's gonna yell at me until I return okay. But I, it, kind of works Let, let's go ahead and run this other function so this also fails question mark you well now it's yelling me well we can't convert this result to what it needs to be here so having like multiple errors take types together can be a real pain to sort of wrangle them luckily that's not something we have to solve ourselves uh, many other people in the community have solved it and I'm gonna show you a couple crates that will just make these things a little bit easier for us. So to begin with, uh, if we want to create our own own errors um, and we just don't really care about like, we can use somebody else's errors, then what we can do is we can use a result type from uh, error. Um, that's hard to pronounce. So here's the pronunciation. <laughs> Air, e y r e. Um, the author of this loves puns, so expect to see lots of puns from all of the crates that she's created. Um, using air here is really easy. We just take their result and return that instead. So 
we're going to come here and replace this with a... Well, heck, if um, this won't work anymore the way we have it set up, we're going to return a result. And we're going to switch to use error result. That brings in error result here. And notice now it only wants one thing. What's the thing that happens if it's successful? So in this case, it's, over, it's that. Let's do the same thing over here. But now we have a problem. It's not, it's yelling at us about uh, returning these type of errors here. Uh, so because these aren't true errors. Uh, what this is, um, what the documentation here says is, as long as it implements the error trait, then you can return it, which most libraries do. Um, in, like the standard library, all their errors are definitely implement the error trait. And then most other crates also do the same thing, which is really nice. Uh, so just returning static strings or U32s is not best practice. Uh, so if I want to create true errors, it can actually be a little bit gnarly to try to like set that up. But what we can do is we can create our own enum and basically combine errors from multiple locations uh, and then return those. There's good documentation here in the error crate for how to do that, even though we're going to need another crate to do this for us. So if we come down, I don't know, halfway through this page, we'll see how we can uh, create our own custom errors. We need to use a, a crate called this error. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in here. And this error, error is the only thing I really care about that. I don't really need these. Now, what I can do is I can create an enum uh, that derives error and debug. And uh, then that will allow me to basically create, I mean, this will be our error and it could be one of these things. And then this will also set up what our display is. So several different macros for us to use here. So let's go ahead and create our, our custom error here. So this is going to derive a uh, debug and error. Now, specifically, this is the this error error, not the not the error from um, uh, like the standard library. Then we can have our arms in here. So we have like two potential errors that can happen here. So this always fails. So let's just do like um, always fails as like one of our errors. And of course, it failed as the other error. Well, this is going to yell at us a little bit because this needs to implement display here. Now, we don't have to do anything special to implement display for it. We need to use this macro here. So what is that going to look like for us? Well, I say error, call it like a function. Uh, and then it's sort of like the format or print line. Um, a macro where now we can just put in whatever information we want and we can we can even get information and ex, uh, like bring that in with the uh, curly brackets. So let's say in here this always fails. Don't know what you expected. Okay, so that makes that happy. But now this one needs to implement display. Okay, let's say that this one takes in a U32 because for some reason that's really important. So you're a tuple type, you take in a U32, and then I want to actually display what that error is, like what this number is in our error. So here we're gonna say error. Um, uh, this also always fails, but 
um, the value it failed with was, and then I want you to be a zero. Okay, so if I save that, then no errors down here. So now we're returning this error result type. So instead of instead of this, I want to actually return one of these arms. So with this always fails, we're gonna do a custom error uh, always fails. Um, now, just doing this by itself won't work. We have to do an into to explicitly convert it into the error that we really want it to. But then it works just fine. Um, and then for this error, we're gonna do an error, uh, custom error. Um, this is, of course it failed. And then we're gonna pass in, uh, let's do our 42 again, and then into. Nothing is failing, everything is working just fine. So if I run this test, Uh, all right, so we see a couple things. Running one test, error, this always fails. I don't know what we expected. So we actually get this, this error printed out to the screen along with a, uh, a stack trace. Now, we're getting a little bit of a weird stack trace because I'm in, a, I'm in an integration test and integration test when you like throw errors like this uh, act a little bit strange. Um, we don't see the other error because it basically erred like right away at this point, because that's what the question mark is doing. Uh, it got to this point, errored out. It's not even going to run any more code. It's done. It returns out. So if I take you, um, I mean, heck, if I, if I allow this, but we just say, you know, This is, this is an okay. So we're just gonna return it. And we rerun you again. Now we say, now we see this also always fails, but the value it failed with was 42. So we get this number that was passed in. So if you want to be able to pass in any data that's going to be printed out uh, in your code, uh, then this is, this is an excellent way to be able to do that. So to recap, you need two libraries to help out with this, uh, error and uh, this error. Now those are just the, the favorite ones I have. There's plenty of other of these error handling crates that you can go look at. Uh, there is anyhow, uh, let's see, this error, there's, um, oh, there's one more and I always forget what it's called. But if you go search for error handling in crates.io, you should find several that you can use. Anyways, this does allow you to essentially wrap uh, other error types around. So imagine that instead of a U32, we wrap an error type from some other crate, um, or maybe even just the standard library error. So it, there always are errors, but uh, we're wrapping other people's errors, and then we can just display those here. All right. Uh, anyways, that is how we can use results to do error handling and uh, how to like actually create our own errors uh, properly. So uh, hopefully this is helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.